Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create a Visco or VSCO inspired color and edit for your photographs in Adobe Lightroom. So Visco, if you scroll through it, it's been a popular app for the past few years and continues to remain popular. And when you think about a Visco style filter, they try to replicate you know, film stocks and film filters. And often when I think about it, you get those muted kind of shadows it's a little bit more gray rather than black. You get maybe moody type of colors in the blues and greens or adjustments of the saturation. So I've got a photo open in Lightroom and I'm gonna show you how you can replicate some of that muted film style visco aesthetic. So obviously a subject matter of the photo aside, we can begin with the basic tools and the most fundamental of all for this, I feel like is the tone curve. So in the tone curve, we have ability to adjust the shadows and the highlights of the entire image. And you can see on the histogram, you know, what proportion of our image is highlights, shadows, midtones. You can see the spike here in highlights because of this pure white area in the blinds and a, a relatively heavy amount of shadows here in the left side of the photo. So one quick way to get that muted film look is in our tone curve, let's increase the shadows up a little bit. So now you can immediately see all the shadows start to get pushed over a little bit more gray, but we lose some of this information. There's no more any pure black in the photo. And one thing we can do to bring back that contrast a little bit is just add an anchor point kind of right here on that first quarter. You can see that the curves tool is divided into these kind of quadrants. If we add an anchor point right there, kind of at 25%, we can bring the shadows up and down to our taste level. Now you don't wanna bring it past a straight line, otherwise you start to get some inversion of colors. Interesting a little way on how the curves tool works, but we're basically taking the lower 25% or the first you know, quarter of shadows and adjusting only those while keeping the rest of the line relatively even. Now that we've got our base faded look in place, we can add some color and mood into this photo. And there's many different ways you can do it. You could just switch color channels on the curves tool and adjust the greens and different things there. That's a perfectly capable and very flexible way of doing it. Or you could also go into something like the split toning panel. And here you can just insert colors into the highlights and shadows for a nice balance. So if I wanted to have like a greenish blue kind of cold look, I can add some of that greenish blue saturation into the highlights, maybe play around with it, and maybe a darker green into the shadows. So, I mean, you don't have to do both, you can do either or, and you can adjust it to your levels or liking. Now, finally, when you do all that adjusting on the curves, you might wanna go back to the basic exposure settings and fix up the contrast a bit since we did squeeze everything so much over maybe play around with the exposure and contrast to bring some of it back. In this photo, maybe I wanna lower the highlights just a tad to get some of the information back in there. You can also play around with the shadow level here to brighten or darken it up, depending on how faded you want it. And another important one is the saturation. If you wanna go for a more muted look, you can decrease the saturation. If you wanna bring some pop of color back into it, you can increase the saturation a little bit maybe even the vibrance left or right. From there, you're basically done. I suppose if you want, you can see what a vignette might look like, or maybe a little bit of noise and grain on your photo, depending on if it had it already. But we've gone from a pretty neutral contrasted color to a more moody visco or film type of edit. Maybe for this case, I could even take it into Photoshop and adjust the strength of the overall effect if I want it to be a little bit more subtle or not by stacking the original photo on top of the bottom one and adjusting the strength. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like on it below, subscribe to my channel to stay tuned for all of my future videos, and you can check out some more Lightroom tutorials in the playlist on my channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.